tiros en Los Ángeles, California, del mago. Él se llamaba Eduardo Escobedo. Was one of two men found dead in an industrial stretch of Willowbrook. Escobedo, nicknamed El Mago, which translates to the magician. Born in 1984, he went from Garfield High in East Los Angeles to hanging out with Floyd Mayweather, popping bottles with Lyme, and owning a popular restaurant chain to lying deceased in his own car outside a warehouse near Cop. They called him El Mago, the magician, I assumed for the way he could make the bag disappear on behalf of Ivan Guzman, the son of you-know-who and a member of the Chapitos, who him and his three brothers took over their father's mantle. And one of the things they were doing was flooding L L.A. with the reefers, and that's what El Mago was in charge of. In high school, he was nicknamed Puerca Eddie, Porky Eddie, for his build. And according to some online comments, quote, all the boys wanted to work for him while he was still in high school. So how did he end up unalived outside of Privada, a warehouse private party last Thanksgiving? It was 8 a.m. Thanksgiving 2023. Sheriff's deputies respond to an industrial area filled with warehouses. Eduardo Escobedo and Guillermo de Los Angeles are both deceased at the scene, laying in and around El Mago's car. Third guy got taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening wounds. This was down in what they call, well, on the map it says Willowbrook, but it's in between Compton and Watts. And if you take town, the street this warehouse was on straight up about, I don't know, 10 miles, you end up in the heart of Skid Row. As you can see from his social media, El Mago, real name Eduardo Escobedo, was living the high life. I was surprised to find out that his restaurant chain was the favorite destination of a lot of people I know. Many people came to visit me because it was one was right down the street one way and one was right around the corner the other way, the Benny Hibachi. You might have seen it. It's a popular food truck by the Staples Center and then they also have a physical location on 11th and Hill. Here is El Mago chopping onions in the kitchen. Now this photo was used in 2020 maybe to him by his lawyer to get him off of federal probation early. And federal probation is really federal parole. He had just gotten out of prison. He got a four year to nine and nine month sentence for 10,000 uh, pounds of the reefers conspiracy. So he only did a few years for that and they let him off probation, what they call federal parole early because he was doing so well. U.S. District Judge Dana M. Sabra said he was an enormous success free from these influences, you are a very productive, wonderful human being. Talking about El Mago's Benny Hibachi business. Here's a picture of El Mago with the various owners of several other food and grocery chains in LA, along with some other people. And some people say they all were laundering illegal proceeds. Is that true? I don't know. He said he had gone straight. The street said different. Quote, he wasn't like others that claimed to be gente del chapo. This guy was the real deal. Now back to the crimes. Looks like El Mago or one of his friends slash bodyguards was able to take out the guy who took out him. The Guillermo de Los Angeles guy was a 47-year-old supposedly member of 18th Street. He went by Sad Boy as a nickname and he had just gotten out that prior Christmas. So he had only been out like 11 months uh, after a federal 10-year term for MBTHOD man distribution. Both dead inside or around El Mago's car. Here's El Mago's son on some social media pictures with the black BMW in question. So what happened? Seeing as that it's a warehouse known for, for providers, it was Thanksgiving, a big party probably happened with live music, drinking. <laughs> Provada's a warehouse where it's invite only, but they have singers in there, music, uh, you know, some are grimy, some are upscale. Uh, there, you know, I've been to some that are full of fancy cars and nose fiestas. Perhaps these two guys has got a little too much tequila and other things in him and got into an argument but I kind of doubt it a guy like El Mago anybody with money isn't just hanging out in LA by themselves in their you know hundred fifty thousand dollar car with jewelry on had to be a lot of other people there was it a proverbial drug deal gone bad 
perhaps, though I doubt they were doing a deal, you know, in the wee hours of the morning on Thanksgiving, and a guy at El Mago's level, or at least the level he used to be, who know what he was doing when he got taken out, uh, probably would have people dropping off, dropping off stuff, and the money would come later. I can't imagine they were doing a hand-to-hand. -hand. So, why would have El Mago and this guy banged each other? Raised in East Los Angeles, Eduardo Escobedo, a.k.a. El Mago, rose to become the primary distributor of the reefers in L.A. for Chapo Guzman's oldest son, Ivan Archibaldo Guzman. A prosecutor said in his 2014 detention hearing, a bail hearing, he laundered the proceeds in part by buying exotic cars and shipping them to Culiacan, capital, capital of Sinaloa. Now, I did see some stuff on the internet that borderland beat where someone claims El Mago actually got a start with El Chino Antrax. El Chino Antrax was part of El Mayo's operation. He then got into some trouble, received what seemed to be a pretty late prison term, got out, and was promptly found. Now, El Mayo and Chapo's sons are sort of at odds, battling over territory. It'd be interesting if Mago moved from El Mayo's camp to the Chapitos camp. 2009, 3 a.m., downtown Los Angeles. A celebration of the Festival of the Virgin of Guadalupe is ending near Old Olvera Street. Bentley Continental GT is at a red light near Cesar Chavez and Alameda, driven by a 25-year-old man named Jose Luis Macias. Two men step in front of the car, start dumping rounds into the Bentley. Macias speeds off, makes a frantic u turns hops on the 101 freeway. Shooters hop in their own cars, possibly a Hummer and a Cadillac Escalade, and follow them, raining a storm of bullets on the $100,000 Bentley, showering the lands with shell casings and glass. He takes a mortal wound, crashes. Police find him. Luis Macias passed away in the hospital two days later. So after Mr. Macias passes away in this spectacular fashion, shot to death in his Bentley, in the downtown freeway, LAPD starts investigating, and they uncovered that his nickname on the streets was El Guerrito, and he might have been, was, handling stuff coming in from the notorious Ariano Felix organization in Tijuana. Now, the Felix brothers, the Ariano Felix brothers, are all deceased, or I think there's one left who's in prison, but they still exist as the Tijuana group. L.A. is a place where they got a lot going on, so... And El Guerrito is one of the guys who was still doing stuff for them back in 09. Now, there was talk uh, amongst from informants, basically, that El Mago was involved in a power struggle with Macias. Remember that Sinaloa and Tijuana around were having a brutal war around that time. This is when Tijuana's homicide rate was the highest in the world. Well, it is again now. And one of the main things that people in Mexico fight over is receivers in the United States. Who gets to control the major dealers on this side of the border? Perhaps Sinaloa wanted Macias gone so that Tijuana would have less income coming from L.A. to fund their war. A large-scale receiver and distributor for the Mexicans in the city of Los Angeles could very well be sending tens of millions of dollars each month and revenue back over the border. The Flores twins of Chicago, the guys that infamously testified against El Chapo and did the podcast with 50 Cent, they had their peak years. They were sending over maybe like a billion a year back over the border to pay for what they were getting. So that's certainly plausible, at least, that Macias was taken out as part of a way to wake, weaken Tijuana or, or as a beef over who was going to be uh, distributing a lot of this, who was going to be distributing most of the material. Several months pass. LAPD eventually arrests a 34-year-old guy named Michael Angel Alleman for first-degree murder, attempted murder, and shooting into an occupied vehicle. Now, this guy, it wasn't as cut and dry that this was a hit. Uh, this guy got... His girlfriend testified and some other people that a few months prior to this, in his white Escalade, he had shot somebody at a nightclub in Pico Rivera. It just basically sounds like a drunken argument at a club. 
And then he also was implicated in this shooting of El Burrito on the freeway. There was another guy with him. Remember, the witness saw two people. The other guy claims he doesn't know what happened, and he turned state's evidence. Alleman received 165 years for these two different shootings. He's in, I think, High Desert or Salinas Valley right now, though he does have a parole date in, I think, 2034. Now, El Mago's name didn't appear in any of the appeal documents I read. I, of course, didn't read the whole case file, but when you read these newspaper articles and it starts saying, oh, this homicide was part of a drug war or this or that, it's just information from informants usually or people trying to get lighter sentences for themselves. This guy was named, I think, Cabral. He was working as a... He, he drove stuff from Arizona to California sometimes, and he said that the shooting uh, of Macy's might have been part of a drug war, but I didn't see El Mago's name anywhere in it. And again, this homicide sort of sounds like El Mago's homicide where, I mean, were these two guys, these people just getting into arguments when they're out in public? Doesn't seem like pre-planned hits. Now, there was a comment on Borderland Beat that said, I'm sure it was payback for killing El Guerrito or else he and he was also from Islos. And most of L.A., Captain and South Central is El Mayo's turf. And most of L.A., Captain and South Central area is El Mayo's turf as opposed to East L.A. with Los Chapitos. And from what I heard, he used to be at all those L.A. parties where a lot of Mayo and other guys were at trying to play big shot. No one really liked El Mago and his East L.A. people, Jeffrey Rambo and all the Maravilla people. That's another thing that rubbed other L.A. factions the wrong way. Everyone knew he was a rat who got out early, even though a woman in the car snitched on him. So this was fun reading these comments and breaking them down and trying to pull out something useful from them, but also being aware of people just say anything. The girl that, that was in the, the homicide case of the guy getting killed in a Bentley, there was a girl who gave some information to the police. It was about her boyfriend, Alleman, the guy who got sentenced to prison. She didn't really snitch on him. She made an, a statement initially, and then she, I think she refused to testify after that, or she did say the same thing, but she didn't say El Mago did anything. So I don't think El so El Mago really was never, I don't know why the newspaper put his name in as being implicated in this guy's murder. The only reference to El Mago being associated with this murder was at his 2014 bail detention hearing when he uh, got caught, I think, leaving the stash house in West Adams where the 5,000 pounds were. A Los Angeles homicide detective came and testified and said, Eddie Escobedo, a.k.a. El Mago, ordered the homicide of Macias. Well, trust me when I tell you, the police will show up at your bail hearing and just say stuff like that to try to keep your bail high or keep you from getting bail to keep you in jail, and they might not even think it's true. I mean, if they had strong evidence he ordered the murder or something, well, why don't you charge the guy? It seems like all this information about El Mago had this guy killed. The only concrete place it could have come from was the LAPD perhaps planning the story. Though it could be true. I mean, it certainly sounds plausible, but... Quote, Our understanding is that an individual and a rival drug trafficker ordered the hit on the man in that bet. Sounds like the kind of thing police say to keep you from getting bail. I mean, why was El Mago's name never came up in the shooter's case as far as what I saw? And the second probable shooter, he started saying this was all involved with a drug ring as part of his plea deal. But if he had concrete info on El Mago, and he turned informant snitch in this case, why didn't he get on the stand and specifically inform on El Mago? In 2011, two years after the shooting of the Bentley, detectives did question Mr. Escobedo El Mago about the homicide, but they let him go and then they hit him with a subpoena for the murder trial, but not as a witness. And then I don't think he even showed up for the subpoena. So 
was he really a suspect or was he just a name they got floated by some informant or some cop? And again, there's a lot of, and again, the intelligence that's coming from the police, which they're feeding to the newspaper, doesn't quite make sense because the newspaper articles say El Mago's brother was also convicted and given life, but I can't find what his name is, and I don't see that in the paperwork. It was two guys. It was Alamon, unless Alamon is his brother. I don't know. It was Alamon and this other guy who turned on him, and that guy didn't get life. So it'd be interesting if anybody knows if Miguel, Michael, Angel Alamon is, was El Mago's brother. I'm not sure, but he's cooling his heels in California prison till at least 2034. But as for El Mago, after the 09 homicide of Macias, he certainly seems to have spread his wings in the reefer business. He was caught leaving a stash house with 5,000 pounds in West Adams District, caught on the phone talking about five tons coming through one of those infamous Sinaloa border tunnels. And finally, he was caught in a conspiracy to remove 10 tons for which he received four years and nine months. He was released in 2018. Since he'd been out of prison, El Mago Escobedo flaunted his opulent lifestyle on social media. Posed for photos with Floyd Mayweather and Al Pacino, he wore flashy track suits by Dolce and & Gabbana and sported a diamond-encrusted Richard Milley watch. I can tell you from experience that his Benny Hibachi food truck and restaurant were really successful businesses. Everybody was pulling up for the Benny Hibachi during pandemic and even afterwards, like I said, they got two, they got the food truck and they got the store. You know, maybe it would be quite the irony if uh, El Mago had stopped uh, doing street stuff and ended up getting killed the way he did. But after reading about this case, it's no wonder that the activities of the people from Mexico are growing on this side of the border because it doesn't sound like law enforcement has very good insight into what's happening on the Latin streets. Uh, this is a, the, the intelligence about El Mago is very mixed bag. The stuff in the newspaper seems riddled with error. And uh, it was interesting trying to use some comments from online to piece some stuff together about the demise of Mr. Eddie Escobedo, a.k.a. the magician. Was he just a guy who got drunk at a party? Bumped into a recently paroled 18th Street gang member, they get into it, have a shootout, they both die. Did he call hits on Bentley driving rivals? Hard to say. But I will leave you with a few anonymous comments on Borderland Beat. They got you, Puerca. Payback for El Verito. You thought we lost our courage, but no, your godparents could no longer stop the order. Out profit, America, don't.